sup nerds how's it going my dudes are you right my friends my family my people everyone it is i the devil joined by a lovely friend of mine on today's episode of connie's notes i'm taking over this series now it is mine welcome to episode one point eight how about we uh greet our fellow uh human being here i'm not human but he is look at him <laughs> look at him <laughs> and that's I don't the know intro what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> that, that's the intro no <laughs> ladies and gentlemen everyone inside and outside the ballpark my name is Novid player uh welcomed by chris connie welcome to episode 18 of the Novid notes podcast where we talk about creators content creators world creators all of the amazing creators inside of vr chat welcome to project fest 2024 coming june 28th through july 7th this episode is the amazing community director, sportscaster, announcer, legendary otter himself, Chris Connie. Welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Hello. So I am doing amazing. I just got finished eating like a big meatball sub. Uh, we, we initially wanted to record this yesterday, but uh, we couldn't just because of how tired we were from doing work, <laughs> trying to set all this stuff up. But uh, yeah, we're now finally here. If I'm recording this, it's been long in the making for this episode where we can finally us two meet together. And so I'm really happy here and also really happy for the fact that I got to eat a meatball sub before this episode recording. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, Chris, you know, tell tell the listening audience, you know, a little bit about yourself. You know, what what is Chris Connie? Uh, Chris Connie is a Floridian degenerate that uh, decided one day to try and focus too much of his time on virtual reality, and he's kind of stuck with it ever since for like the past six years now. Um, so if you know me, then you probably know me from a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but starting from the beginning, uh, you probably know me from my World of Games or the fact that I hosted a poker tournament, or I turned that experience into hosting stuff for Laserdome, which is like Laser Tag but in VR. Or also other conventions that exist as well, like trying to help support them when it comes to sport casting, whatever they need, or even just doing community manager stuff, or just other random locations, like for the fact that I do stuff of eradication and like having fun there. Or you probably know me as like the blue scout in like the Indigo Park Discord. Who knows at this point? But yeah, Chris Connie's just a nerd online that does way too much stuff. Fair enough. So. Yeah, so you've you've been on this platform for quite a long time. You know, with with that, you know, what got you into VR chat? What inspired you to come to this platform? Honestly, I would say that it was initially the videos from James Key, like the OG uh, VR chat in a nutshell videos, where I saw those for a couple times. And like that seems quite interesting. And then so like back in like 2017, um, I got enough money to buy myself a. Uh, oculus rift cv1 and so i purchased it i did the demo and then the demo blew me away so much i had no other choice but to just go to sleep there, there's only two times in my life that that has ever happened where like i didn't know what to do with myself so i just went to bed which was the uh <laughs> demo that oculus had i think it was called like first contact and chapter one of delta rune and those are the only two times where it's like, I don't know what to do myself now. That was an, an amazing experience. So I downloaded VR chat and then, uh, you know, from there, I just decided to go and play World Games. So initially, just those initial, like, game, uh, James Key videos were what brought me into this. And, you know, ever since, I've, I've stuck in this platform for, like, what, 3,000 hours or something? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I was going to say, with that, right, like, there's so many different you know things when it comes to this platform uh however like let's get more in depth with like what you do so you know as some of you may know um this amazing otter uh is actually one of the voices for uh the laser dome announcer voices um in the original laser dome map you know so out of out of curiosity chris uh what what got you to that point like what made you you know, start doing like sports casting and like uh, announcer voices. Honestly, I think that like growing up, I just had a massive um, hyperfixation when it comes to just sports and uh, like tournaments. Like 
my my dad really really wanted to get me into playing sports which i i did enjoy like watching sports but never enjoyed playing them so he tried to get me into like playing soccer i i was the kid that was always chasing a shadow he tried to get me into playing baseball um i was the kid that was scared of getting hit by the ball and so i i never really wanted to participate in these sports but i loved watching them so when he was the uh he, when he was like the vp of sykes we actually had uh, areas uh, dedicated to like those specific spots there, and so our family would actually go to the uh, the games in Tampa. So we would watch the Tampa Bay Rays in like those uh, black seats, like right next to home plate. We would have like a uh, custom like balcony area as well for our for watching Tampa Bay Lightning. Which, by the way, me and my sister both absolutely love hockey. We absolutely love it. And um, even when it comes to Buccaneers, like I think they're like just like a mid team at that point, but we still we still watch them. And I re I remember I vividly remember eating so many M and M's in that little suite. But yeah, I I loved watching sports. I hated participating in them. But because of that, um, I started to get really interested in. And to add on to that was my love of uh, fighting games as well. And actually, just like the competitive over there. So my dad actually purchased Dead or Alive 4. And what I would do is that I would get like a sheet of paper and then write down a whole bunch of names of the characters. And then just spam the punch and kick buttons to see who would win. And make like a little single elimination tournament bracket for that just to see who would win. And for the most part, it was just people getting into like infinite combos and that being the end of it. But, you know, overall, it was really fun. So I think that just like the idea of spectating sports and the idea of fighting games really got me excited into the whole world of like the whole tournament scene. And that just kind of leveled up more and more as time progressed up until the point where, you know, I decided to try and make my own tournaments. And then from there, I learned what sports casting was and I just decided to yell more. And that led one thing to another led to uh, my voice being into Laserdome. Absolutely. So yeah, no, and uh, I, and I I'm also um, I'm also a big hockey fan myself. Um, born and born and raised a hockey fan. Uh, as I'm a I'm a St. Louis Blues guy myself, uh, born and raised. But uh, so with that, right? You know, there's you. So you had your like voice. You know, be one of the main announcer choices for Laser Dome One. So let's go a little bit further. You know, down the roads. Um, so you've also commentated multiple different tournaments inside of VR chat, you know, as you were saying, you were doing tournaments. So, you know, what, what pushed you to go down that route and, you know, go commentate these tournaments? Like what, what opportunities led to that point? I think I just kind of went into um, seeing how many games there were. And initially it was just because of my, uh, start with Laser Dome with helping out with tournaments, and then Cyric seeing the first seeing that first tournament for the finals, just me constantly yelling, um, and then having that basically spiral into like having a full on commentator area because initially with like la like the first uh, editions of Laser Dome, there was no commentary booth, there was nothing like that whatsoever, and when then when I started uh, doing commentary just out of the blue for Cyrix's tournaments, he started to build those ideas all together to try and make a legitimate production of Laserdome. So it isn't just like one guy streaming, it becomes a full-on, uh, it, it becomes a full-on event for people to go and watch, for people to go and spectate, and uh, for, you know, teams to basically have their own fan bases and to have that be its own sporting event. So because of that initial push right there for like more and more development with an esports scene for Laserdome, it led to more people seeing what esports could be inside of VR chat, which then led to more people trying to go and create their own little uh, esports league or their own like sporting event. And I got lucky enough to be a part of a couple of them to do commentary, which, you know, sometimes we would be in a physical booth, sometimes it would just be a VTuber model. Um, but all of the time, it was a lot of fun to go and do. And even though I didn't know most of the games, like, I, I'm not the best at 8-ball whatsoever. Most of the time, I would probably get... I'm, I'm the type of person to go for, like, a golden break. And if not, I'll get the golden break the second round. <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah, I, I would say that, like, with everything else going on, it was mainly just that initial push for Laserdome. And uh, from there, you know, the snowball rolled. Fair, fair. So, yeah. So I got to ask, you know, as, you know, one of the voices for uh, Laserdome announcers, was there ever a line specifically that was, like, your favorite line to record? Oh, God. That's actually a really good question. I, I will say that, like, the line that I've heard the most, just because it's been recorded multiple times, is uh, get in there, piss in their bed, and leave. But, <laughs> like, most of the time when it comes to... Most of the time when it comes to those voice lines, those were all completely improv So... With how Cyrix was doing voice lines at the time was that he gave a direction to everyone. So for Red Team with uh, Fabquake, it was basically the idea of him sounding like a bit bored. He was meant to basically be just a guy in a uh, arcade just hosting another game of laser tag. And that was the whole premise of it. You know, he's just a guy that was getting by when it comes to whatever money he's paid. Not necessarily someone that's meant to be like, you know, abrasive or excited or anything like that. Then when it came to uh, Senpai Satan, um, she was also given direction for being, I guess, like a bit more snarky, but also yet again, a lot more like positive attitude. And then, God, what was his name? Lars. Lars Viking, he was meant to have more of like a uh, televangelist approach to his uh, voice lines. And so everyone had their own direction. For me, Sirius just said, be myself. And so most of the voice lines that you would hear inside of, uh, Laserdome 2.0, or I think it's just called Laserdome now. Those are all completely, uh, those are all completely improvised. Where it's just like, okay, we want a 30 second, we want a 20 second, we want a 10 second, and we want like a, a welcome thing for you to play out. Where it's just like, say something that's like about the team or anything like that, and it's just like you know being funny. And uh, for for the most part, it's just you know constantly trying to improvise that. But I would say that like. Getting their piss in their bed and leave. Getting their piss in their bed and leave is, you know, one of my favorite lines, just because of how direct, but also how like off-putting it is. Because you know, you're you're playing just a normal game of laser tag, and then you hear that, which I think is complete mood change from like people like trying to take it seriously to now. Okay, this is meant to be something a bit more different. So I think that really sets the tone of what Laser Dome is about. Fair enough. I was say, yeah, no, it, I'm a uh, God. There was one voice line that I remember specifically. Let's try that again. I'm like, damn. <laughs> and I'm I'm not good Actually, at laser. I can tell you more teams. about that. Sure. So, um, initially when my voice was introduced, it was meant to be the voice for free for all. Because that was actually a new thing at the time. And it was for the Zappening, which was our Halloween tournament. And so I wanted to do something that I wanted to do something to catch people off guard because no one knew that my voice was going to be implemented, including the referees at the time. So um, when Cyrix uh, was recording voice lines, he initially told me, do one normal, do one excited and do something on your own. So I did three, three of ones, which was the game. The game has been reset. The game has been reset. And the one that he used, let's try that again. <laughs> and when I heard that he included that one, um, I I knew for sure that I had to play a prank on the referees. And so I told them that there was a bug inside of the game where they need to like select the options and then hit reset. And then when they hit reset, they did not hear the initial laser voice. They heard mine. So I really, really wanted to throw them off guard with that. And so with that voice line, I'm so happy that that was the one that got included just because of how iconic that, that has also became as well. You could say, uh, you could say it was, uh, Chris Connick. Shut up. Oh my, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Bad dog. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I blame a uh, lion from Metaverse Degen for getting me into puns again. It, you know what? It, it happens. <laughs> uh, but... I mean, with my with my Metaverse Degen episode, it was like all what was it like potato puns or something? Like I, 
Oh, uh, well, we'll, there, there we'll was like throw a clip like on the screen. Five, ten minutes. Shout out, shout out, Lion <laughs> and Raptor over at Metaverse DJ. But, but yeah, so <laughs> going off of going off of that, um, so you've done you've done de- you've definitely done a bunch of streams when it comes to uh, tournament casting. So, what was it like working with like different people um, when it comes to like each tournament? Oh, I would say that it was actually like quite a chaotic bunch to say because there there's some there's some people that I love working with and then there's some that I feel like that I need to like delve into a bit more when it comes to finding that synergy. So when you're doing commentary and when you have like co-casters you're working with, the most important thing that you always need to figure out is synergy is when you're going back and forth when you're taking the helms when you're giving it to your co-commentator stuff like that and there are times where like i've done tournaments where i I've, I've taken a step back like after we we uh did the live stream it's just like that was not good that was not a good stream at all i mean like i would say that like the the one major time i would say was like for vircon i think 2022 for the uh, for the putt putt tournament, where like I I casted with Fizzy a couple times, um, and so there there's sometimes where like it works like for the eight ball tournament like the initial ones we were having a fun time where like it was just very chaotic a lot of like very drama inducing matches and you can probably find a couple clips of just both of us screaming at some parts just flat out yelling because of like how close the eight ball got or like how a shot looks or anything like that, but. With the putt putt tournament, I didn't really like how that turned out because it slowly started to like focus in on like okay now we're trying to like play characters but then also like we're trying to talk about the tournament and it just became this garbled mess where like Fizzy wants to like add some puns here because that's what he's known for. I want to like maybe talk about the match or like try to do like some side commentary and just becomes you know Mitch match. There is no synergy. There is no like work going back and forth. We're not playing a game of tennis. We're just lobbing the ball against the wall, and that's it. Fair. So, but when it comes to like commentary, it it's a mixed bag because it all depends on how much availability you have with the other person. Because if it's a new person, you need to kind of break both of each other like in in order to like find that direct synergy. So, like if I'm doing commentary review, we actually practice. We practice together on just like random things going on so that we could find a synergy that works together. We could find a flow that actually has both of us feeling confident and actually giving us both direct times back and forth where we can go and speak. So we're not uh, like we're not like stepping on each other's toes. Absolutely. And it's... so it all depends on how much time you have with each other. So it's funny you mentioned that <laughs> segue. Um Funny enough that we're talking about uh, me and uh, Chris commentating because uh, there actually is an event that we're going to be doing that. And it's going to be freaking amazing. I'm really excited. There is a tournament. You'll have to check the Discord at p- uh, discord.gg slash pjkt. But there is a tournament during the Project Fest that the color commentary and you know co-commentators are us. It's going to be fantastic. As Chris said, we did actually practice with some synergy related things. I'm su- I'm super excited for that by the way. I like I'm super hyped. Um but enough segue. Yeah, honestly, like it, <laughs> it just took like a couple of hours for us to like find that match. Or not even a couple of hours. I'd probably say just like 2 like, hours. like what like 45 minutes and then eh. like we spent the rest of the time just like messing around like do like adding our own like fake ad libbing for uh what was it? World Series of Poker main event for last year? <laughs> yeah, I'll say uh, we did some fighting game ones. We did some uh, poker. Uh, regardless, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. So make sure to go check out that event. Mm-hmm. But going oh, back, I also will add as well um, for anyone who wants to do like commentary stuff, especially for like an area like VR chat, um, just don't take it seriously. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is to try and hyperfixate on like every little thing that you go and say, or like try to make it look professional. VR chat is not that environment, and if you're gonna try and do something like that, you're actively gonna be hurting everyone around you trying to make something professional when in reality it's not. After 
after all, when it comes to this platform, this is not a game engine. This is just a thing that's being hosted, and things happen that you know aren't in the control of anybody. So to try and say that this is like a professional environment would be completely false. This is meant for people just flapping around and having fun. And so if you are going to do commentary and like you want to practice, practice on some of the weirdest stuff. Find the most random sport that you can and try improvising with it. If you can do that, then you can do commentary for practically anything inside of VRChat. Very, very true. So I'll say with that, right, you know, kind of going back into your side of like commentating around the metaverse. So you've commentated like Laser Dome, you've con uh, commentated Battle Discs, um, Pool, Avi Wars, like you've done so many. So I got to ask, out of all of the tournaments that you've commentated, which one was your favorite one and why? Oh, God, that's another good question. I don't really know if I do have a favorite because all of them seem to be like going on the up and up uh, when it comes to things happening. I will say though, I think my favorite has to go to Project Fest 23 Abbey Wars because, you know, for the most recent one, there was a lot of fun moments going on there. And, you know, the there was a lot of good vibes happening. And, you know, doing commentary with Cyrix and Max was really, really fun. We were actively supporting each other. I mean, you, you probably saw the clips of, like, it was, like, Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier, and there was, like, another person as well. I, I'm forgetting their name. But that's, like, the trio, if you ever watch UFC, doing a commentary. It, it felt like that with us three there, just actively hyping each other up, talking about different things going on. And, of course, legendary pokes happening as well which definitely added a whole bunch more to it. And, you know, if I if I were to try and recreate, like, a tournament feeling, it would absolutely be that, because it was so much fun to do commentary, and, you know, all the matches were amazing, and even the people there were, you know, great personalities that I would love to have on camera again. No, absolutely. I will say, I there are so many clips out there um, from that tournament in particular. Um, fun fact, uh... You can't see it yet. If there's actual world footage, uh, we will we'll throw some world footage here and there. But we're in the beta version of the Fest 2024 world. Uh, I've been uh, honored to receive access uh, thanks to this being right here. Um, but yeah, so we're actually currently on the stage, um, which will be showcasing performances and whatnot. But yeah, so oh, dude, there's. The, the legendary pokes was probably one of my favorite moments, but I'll say uh, that one moment uh, in the clip where all three of you just jump up and go, yeah, like, and I'll, and I'll throw it here. And just, <laughs> just, I'll throw it here for context. But dude, it, it was legendary, like excitement, you know, uh, it, it's definitely one of those things that it, it's a memory to be had for a long time. Um, and speaking of memories, you know, uh, because there's always, like, a lot of things that are involved with, like, setup and, you know, getting the teams together and stuff. So, you know, out of curiosity, you know, what – was there any behind-the-scenes stuff when it came to uh, – whether it's Laser Dome or Avi Wars tournaments that was just, like, the most funniest or cursed moment that never saw the light of day? God, I don't know, because, like, for the most part, for a setup, it's just been, like, very relaxed. I know that, like, OG tournaments, we would have, like, full-on intros going on that were meant to be as chaotic as possible. But, like, for the most part, it's just been, like, us chilling in a call, just making sure, like, stuff is ready. Like, nothing, like, you know, really impressive other than just, like, you know, calling up teams or even, or, like, we now have, like, downsta uh, like a downstairs area where you could play uh, shotgun roulette. I forgot what it's called in Circus World, but you can now play that with like a 1v1 thing. And so people are doing like mini tournaments there. But for the most part, like if we're talking about like funny things that happen before the tournament, it would have to be like OG Laser Dome that we're talking about. Because it was a tradition um, back in 2020 for the Blood Ravens to basically start Mongolian throat singing. And for everyone else to join in, like they're like like quote they're summoning fucking Cthulhu. <laughs> I can and see it now. I I think we still have a clip or something, but we actually got 
the uh the VoIP VIP servers for VR chat to break because of how many people were yelling into their mics. <laughs> and I think that only happened once. It was the best feeling in the world to break the servers of VR chat just from the amount of hype going on. So if we're talking about like best things to happen, it has to be. It has to be the Bloodburns Mongolian throat singing by far. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. So with, with that, right, like there's so much good when it comes to tournaments and many, many amazing reasons why tournaments, you know, should be made in the metaverse, you know, because I know I know we've talked in private in regards to it, but like in your opinion, why should there be more tournaments in VR chat or in the metaverse in general? Personally, I think it's, it, it, it's, it goes multiple ways because, for one, when it comes to people participating, it's a way for them to participate in a game that they absolutely love and to have a dedicated time where there's guaranteed people that they can go and meet up and talk to. And from a World Credits perspective, that's a dedicated time where you have people playing the game and you can actually see, you know, how people interact and how a meta basically forms. And on top of that, it's just good PR and it's just good advertisement all the way through for the people who are doing commentary to the people hosting the referees for even people playing and also of course the person who made the world in the first place so it's just a massive win-win for everyone for a, a good tournament to be hosted absolutely um so yeah I would say definitely you know and ha. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of segues in this episode. So speaking of tournaments, I know we talked about the one that me and Chris are going to commentate, but there also is another tournament at Project Fest. Um, and I will go ahead and slap the poster up here on the screen somewhere. Um, Chris might get Mike Wazowski. We'll slap. see. We'll give it a good old slap right there. But there will be a Laser Dome 2 tournament at Project Fest. So if you haven't played Laser Dome 1 uh, or the new Laser Dome 2, now you get a chance to compete with some of the amazing players of the community. So definitely go make sure to uh, you know watch it over on uh, Cirrus's channel um, when it does go live or watch it in the world as it will be broadcasted live as well. But there's going to be a lot of segues in this episode, I just realized, because there's a lot to talk about. Because as this episode's airing, Project Fest is live. So, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of segues. I might have to release this like the day of or the day before. <laughs> no, I'll have to release it the day before because, yeah, there's tournaments and stuff the day, like the opening day. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Post I don't know if it's crazy once. Oh, no, not this again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so, yeah. So, speaking of, um, you know, project community, you know, as the community manager, director, over at Project Community, you know, what what dragged you from being a sportscaster, you know, announcer? What dragged you from going from that point to becoming a manager slash director over at PJKT? Um, I think two things. Number one is just like because I like talking and so I like uh I like being on camera and just like you know, giving direction when it comes to, like stuff going on. So if people needed the PR person, I was always there. If people needed like a recording buddy or like a stand-in actor or anything like that, I'm always there. And so with PJKT, they were in dire need of like someone to basically be the face as it was starting up. And so I volunteered to be in that position just because um, I knew I knew exactly how to try and advertise project community to people. And so because of that, they brought me on board. And then secondly, I, uh, I actually have quite a bit of expertise in the outside world when it comes to how some of these events are actually formed because I actually work for an events and media company called Edge Factory. I am the associate playback engineer, which basically means I help with live streams. And uh, I get flown around sometimes to also help those live streams, or sometimes the live streams get flown to me. So i have a I have a bit of insider knowledge when it comes to the things that like people look for when it comes to stuff like events and also additional stuff that people may not think about, like the awards that we may uh, try to nominate ourselves for or apply for, which yeah, that's the reason why uh, you'll see in the world. Uh, there's a little 
little tiny golden trophy that you could find that has the telly words on it that we actually won. God, I love segues. <laughs> so many segues. But yeah, yeah. I'll say, as, as Chris stated, uh, the Project Community team uh, did win gold at the Tully Awards uh, this past month. Yeah. yeah. I'll be on screen. Yeah, it was late May. <laughs> yeah, late May. So, yeah. So, speaking of speaking of that, right, you know, what what inspired the will to you know participate and submit for the you know um the telly awards so i wanted to do something in the first year to basically try and prove a point to not only uh our, our volunteer staff but also everyone around us to showcase like how much these events actually mean in the outside world as well and uh i i saw with edge factory that they actually won quite a bit of awards and some of them actually being Tele Awards. If I remember correctly, I think they won like six or eight Tele Awards before this year's uh, award show. And so I was actually quite interested in seeing if I could have PJKT be an award winning convention. So I did some research when it comes to just like what award shows exist out there for like anything relating towards uh, mixed reality or like metaverse stuff or any just anything in general that could relate towards us. And Telly's actually had something. So I wanted to see if I could like uh, have a film ready or, you know, something like that to go and present. And I really wanted to push the idea of ha having PJKT and having its volunteer staff members be able to call themselves award winning. And especially with the tellies, you know, this isn't just like an award show that exists where you're like, you you put in some money and they give you a trophy out of it. This is a massively prestigious award show where you have companies like uh, NASA, Golden State Warriors, Adobe, Airbnb. You know, you have all of these major companies applying for these same awards that, you know, are, are also winning them. So you even have like the Walt Disney Company as well, just to name a couple. You could probably even show them like a, a press release with mm -hmm. all the names that appear but i knew for sure that like if there was an award show this may be the one that we would want to apply for just because of how much prestige it has and how much it would mean to everyone a part of pjkt so when the moment came uh we applied like the day of um when the early deadline was going to close off so we applied and then we had to wait until like march to see if we're to get on a short list and Surprise, surprise, we got on the shortlist with companies like Lamborghini, uh, with uh, ESPN, and then also with like other ones like Paris Hilton, Telemundo, The Weather Channel. And so, we also Lionsgate as well. I forgot about Lionsgate. But um, we wanted to see, now that since we're actually a part of this, can we win anything? So from there, it became this massive morale boost saying, hey, now there's a chance, you know, this non-zero number is becoming surprisingly bigger and closer to 100 as time went on. So we all just collectively went together. We stopped everything that we were doing and just focused on trying to advertising. Hey, we got in, we got in, we got in, we got in, we got in. And uh, it, it, as time went on, we saw our, um, we, we saw our application stay at like four stars out of five and we were like the highest one there as time went on and it was it was shocking to see all those two weeks we were high up in the leaderboards when it comes to our awards and when the moment came i uh may or may not found out the information a bit more earlier than supposed to but i checked the website and out of nowhere gold First name, we did it. And ju just to add on to how shocking gold is, I had to look it up on their like blog section about how golds work. So the judges, they only judge on bronze and silver. That that's all that they judge on. That's all that they critique when it comes to giving a grade to all awards. Gold is much more different. For gold awards, you must be, out of all applicants that submit, in the top 
of all applicants. And somehow, without warning, Prizer community is on that list. Yeah, it's de it's so, definitely crazy. It, it's it's shocking. It's shocking to think about. So when the news when the news came out, you know, I was heavily ecstatic about the fact that we won, and then quickly tried to figure out like what resources we have to go to go and like you know post about the stuff. You know, talk to the directors, talk to the staff, and you know, it it was amazing to see. And then it came for the moment where like. Now, since we won, it's time to buy a statuette, which, by the way, uh, all of this to do, actually kind of expensive. So, for the, for the uh, full thing for me to get, I could only buy one awareness package, which is like the discount of thing. But for the statuette alone, um, it costs $275 without tax, without shipping and handling. 275. Yeah. So it was it was a bit of an expense to go and purchase, but you know, it was worth it with the statuette and also with the certificate that comes up because it also has a certificate that you can buy for like an additional 50, which also another expensive purchase. But um one custom thing that they do is that you could actually write any text within like a character limit on the uh, award. So they actually put in their like FAQ. If you don't know like how to put your award, then like this is like a, a brief way to do it. But I decided to go against that because um, I I knew how much this award meant to everyone. So I didn't want to have like you know the award category on, be the first thing that they see, or like Project Fest 2023 or even Project Community. I wanted the first thing for people to see on their award their name because. This is something that means a lot to everyone, and, and I want people who do see their award and for their family and friends to see their award to see their name written first so that everyone understands that, you know, this isn't just like a group of people doing it. There are individuals behind that group. This isn't just an event that's hosted. There's individuals behind that event. And not only that, they are in fact an individual that worked on this. They are in fact part of the reason why that award exists today. And so I wanted to make that clear when it comes to those certificates, when it comes to those statuettes, that they are the reason why this whole entire place exists. Yeah, no, I would say without, you know, without the community itself, like these types of things wouldn't exist. You know, it takes it takes a massive, passionate, kind, and caring team to <laughs> create that. Hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to stop the video right here to let you know that Project Fest 2024 is live. So make sure to come check out Project Fest. Come meet me, as well as the many amazing communities inside of VR Chat that are attending. There's going to be events, performances, and so much more. So make sure to come check it out. You'll see me at my booth for the good portion of it, as well as working on some of the events. So make sure to come check out Project Fest. It is going from June 28th to july 7th so make sure to come out have fun meet some communities meet some creators have fun and we'll get right back into the video Woo! <laughs> you know and i was gonna say with that right like there's so many different individuals from all over the world you know coming together to make an amazing event like project fest you know and it's it's definitely one of those things that you know it's it's mind blowing to to say the least, you know, because realistically, right? If we took this into the real world, you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same, you know. It, it would cost thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to get all these people into one place for this massive event, you know. There'd be ticket costs and everything else. So for us to hold a free event to all, you know. And granted, we don't make any money off this. None of us get paid. This is all volunteer work. But it's definitely a, it, it takes passion. It takes hard work, you know. So with that, you know, one of the, one of the things I wanted to ask in that case, you know, because you, you've been 
as, as a director, you've been at the front lines when it comes to getting stuff done, you know, so out of curiosity, you know, was there times where, um, was, was there times that it might've been too much? Like, and, and if so, like, what was some of the things that you did to like prevent, prevent it from being too much? I, that's actually another really good question. So when it comes to just like workload, I would say that for the first year, that would be the roughest year that we would have just because we started Project Fest in January and we made the promise to ourselves that we would have a full on convention done, like not not like planned, not like, you know, a world built, a full convention done in six months and day one we didn't even know what the hell to call ourselves like initially project community was meant to be just a working title until we found something better like for for the first discord server that was made i think we called it like project frontier and then project community was just gonna be like another name to that but then as time went on project community just became the name that we wanted to go by as time went on, we found out that, oh, we can simplify this to something even better. The project PJKT and then community COM, PJKT.com. And it's something that rolls off the tongue. And then from there, we found out that, oh, we could turn the, the title of project and then just have another name associated with it. So that's the reason how we got Project Fest or Project Festival, PJKT Fest. Even for Lens, PJKT Lens. And we found out how versatile a name like that really is. And then it just spiraled onto there. We wanted to be something a bit more out there. We wanted to be like, you know, the edgy cousin coming into this out of the blue. You know, something that was, some something that was, you know, a bit outlandish at that point, where out of nowhere, this group emerged with all of these people around it, and then uh, things happen with this group. And so that's how we got the idea of like the whole graffiti, the whole like idea of it being like in like a uh, street area. And, you know, this whole idea of the world around project. But I will say that, like, building that idea of what project is may have been the most stressful thing just because we were working off of nothing. We didn't know where the hell this was going from. We didn't know where the hell we were going to. We didn't even know, like, getting anything that we wanted to have here until we started to, like, figure out, okay, like, what mentality should we have going into this? And then with that mentality, what should it look like publicly? So as we move forward, more ideas were introduced and it basically became the mindset of what does, what does PJ Casey mean to us? And we wanted to have it look like this because this is what it meant to us is that it meant to be something rebellious. It meant to be something to say that we could do this. We knew, we knew for a fact that, like, if we didn't push ourselves for those six months, we probably would have just, like, fucked off and went to somewhere else. But we wanted to be the edgy teenager that went against their parents and did something absolutely crazy. We wanted to do something that was so out there when it comes to the idea of hosting something in six months, especially something with so many moving parts, so many uh, team members associated with it. And the requirement of just like all the people around it. We wanted to do something that was like never seen before. And that was the mentality of project was, was sticking it to the idea that, you know, you need a specific individual to do something or you need like a specific group to do something. We wanted to showcase the fact that we are here and we are staying here and we can do all of this and no one else can tell us different. We are the reason why we can go and host these massive things. And if it wasn't for the individuals who believed in us, if it wasn't for everyone who put their time, blood, sweat, tears, and effort into this, you know, 
This is the reason why we have a project is the reason showcasing our rebellious side, showcasing the fact that we don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars. We don't need, you know, people to pay admission tickets. We don't need to go and have, you know, these grand sponsors to go and do this. We, the community, can host something fucking amazing. And we can host something that people love, people can find happiness in, people can go to church, people can make memories with. We want to go and build something that people can have fond memories of later on. And we can go and build something that people can do something amazing with. They could use this platform as a way to build themselves up. We had people going into this that had massive increases of people like joining in with their events, actually sparking grand ideas with partnerships that were never thought of before actually happening. And it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Project Fest and the people behind it. That's the goal of Project, is to be that outlet for people to go and showcase their ideas, to showcase their craft on a stage like this, where it is free from judgment, where you can be who you want, where you can build what you want, and you can show it off to anyone that you want. This is the space where that can happen. And that's why I'm so proud to be here. It's rare that you get chances like this to work on massive projects that have so much positivity behind it. And it's even rarer when you find this many people that would go in support of that idea. This makes me proud. This makes me proud to be in VR chat, to be in virtual reality. This makes me proud to the fact that I spent so much time inside of this game that it dedicated so much my life to this game. All of this work was for something amazing. And we just keep on continuing to help build up upon that. To build brighter futures. To build new resources. To build <laughs> something amazing for people to go and show off. This is the reason why I love Project. We, we can help build a better future for everyone here, for the tens of thousands of people that join in, for the hundreds of communities that show up. We can go and do that. That's what Project means to me. Ab absolutely, fucking lutely man. I, and as somebody who's, you know, just a regular media staff, like, pro Project community has been a life-changing experience you know um I, I can't i can't personally recommend it anymore pretty much anything on the else on this platform you get to meet all sorts of amazing people all sorts of amazing creators communities you know get to cool you know get to attend fun performances events you know it's oh man i i remember very vividly and i know you do too um you know the very first day greeting people by the dozen you know getting getting all of these you know different people from different countries you know continents you know get just waving hi saying hello getting to know them having many conversations you know and having this amazing event you know back in 2023 with the first project fest and you know over 10,000 world visits in that weekend you know it's it was realistically it was a never forgettable experience was that first year that first event you know and uh, the amazing dedication from the team and everything else like i i remember w w at least one of my memories when it comes to that you know was the <laughs> was that closing ceremony i was having the worst tech issues i've ever faced during my vr chat career like that that specific time was during the closing ceremony and i had to run to desktop because i i wasn't i was dead ass not wanting to miss that closing ceremony and and this motherfucker right here <laughs> fucking poured heart and soul into this entire speech you know off the dome you know, going about how amazing the event was, how very poetic. And after the first fest, I, me, you, and a lot of other people, you know, working on the staff at that time, we literally cried that time. 
we 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 were so we were so happy with how the event went, how successful it went. Um I pretty much waterlogged my headset. That's a you'll have to watch the VOD uh in that regard regarding the closing ceremony. It's up on uh it's up on Twitch. It might still be up on Twitch. If not, it's on YouTube. That's one of their projects that they're working on is getting all the VODs over to YouTube. But yeah, so tell me in your own words uh, kind of to revisit that timeline what went through your head after everything was done you know everything was coming to a close what was going through your mind at that point holy fucking shit we did it i mean for the most part that that was it because despite what you may hear when it comes to just like people trying to create stuff inside of this there is no guarantee of success there is no guarantee that you'll have people here. There's no such thing as build it and they will come. And to see that a risk-like project actually had as much success as we had was frankly astonishing. And you can make the argument about like, you know, what success we had when it comes to like the previous things going on or like the communities that we are part of. That was never anything that can guarantee what just happened and as i was there and as we got closer to cameras rolling as we got closer to you know going live it just started to hit me more and more when it comes to how many people showed up and how many faces i saw and how many groups new and old came in because we, we never, we never were guaranteed success. We didn't know anything about how this could potentially look like. We didn't know who was going to show up, if anyone was going to show up at all. Those days going into Fest were definitely some of the scariest ones, just because we don't know how many people would want to support us in, in our first year, in our first event just because of how ambitious the idea is and because of how new the name is. And despite all that, 54 booths, despite all that, 18 events, despite all that, 1600 hours, despite all that, we have seen some of the biggest success possible for a first year. And as time went on, as 45 went to 30 minutes, 35 went to 20, I just kept on standing there. And the only thing I could do is just reflect upon that. Remember those three days when it comes to spending time. I didn't even attend most of the events. I was just in, in the home world for fast and just talking to people, just, just seeing what was around. 30 went to 15. And I, I just kept on remembering those feelings of going back to, is this really going to work? And then going back to the day, going back to, you know, seeing if any groups come in, then going back to the day, then going back to, you know, trying to see who would actually want to attend, then going back to the day, 15 went to 10. I looked behind myself. I saw so many people. Those people all believed. 10 went to 5. I started tearing up just like this. It started to hit me about everything going on. 5 went to 4. Those tears became real. I had to mute. I started crying. Four went to three. I still was crying. The camera crew was all making sure for the final adjustments. Veeps was making sure that the live stream was still going. Three went to two. I was still crying. Just standing there. Nobody knew what was going on with me. Just standing. Full of mute. Two went to one. 60 seconds. I look straight up. Can't really think of anything else other than we did it. 45 seconds. Look back one more time. Look back at the stream going on. 45 down to 15, 15 to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, and that was that. I mute. The cameras are live. I just started bawling. It was it. the best day of my life. 
We really. You we, see that? That's yeah. how. I, that's how these discussions go with Novid. Is that we have these one-on-one -on -one conversations, and every single time I get this fucker to cry as well. Every single time. Fucking bastard. God damn it. No, it, <laughs> it's because like being there live in that moment, I I just I see that you know, and I I absolutely one hundred percent was in the similar mindset you know with with how much we had done with all the people supporting us you know everything just coming to a full stop and just realizing that we fucking did it it's just mm -hmm. it's nuts man you know but it is the most liberating feeling that you can think like just standing there and you know looking at out like i don't know if you can showcase uh what this looks like right now because it, it's just full-on syrix fest right now <laughs> but like just looking out to a sea of booths that are there knowing that there's not only like people behind it but people who support them who are also supporting us and people who see our message that are actively watching it i couldn't even look at the view count going on I just had to look at the comments, and they were flooding when it comes to support. First time crying on the podcast. Oh, damn it, motherfucker. Uh, anyway. Hell yeah, I got there, you. There you <laughs> go. Well. You, you know what? I got you with some good questions, though, so I'll, I'll consider it a fucking even trade. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> with that, right? So, because we are running a little bit out of time, um, but I do want to touch base on this year's fest which is currently live right now, go to Project Fest. Hell, come say hi to me at my booth. I'll be there for the first couple of days uh, saying hi to everybody working with events. Come meet me and the amazing staff over at Project Community. I am promise that's, that's going to be like the second to last segue, I promise. Um, but in that regard, you know, we have so much more this year than we did, you know, last Fest. You know, and just to kind of just to kind of go into it a little bit, you know, we we've essentially over doubled in size when it comes to, you know, the amazing representatives across the metaverse. You know, were you were you or any of the other directors expecting such a big, you know, dramatic increase in that regard? Hell no, a absolutely not, because you know, we, we're still in an uncertainty we're like we had we know that there were some communities that wanted to see how fest 2023 was gonna go and then if it went well they were gonna be part of fest 2024 we did not expect the influx of communities that were to came in and on top of that like there there are still like a whole bunch of new names that are coming in that we have never seen before there are names where you know there's people that like we've maybe heard of here and there that are coming in and there's also names that like we we've only seen them like appear like once or twice that are now like officially coming in with all these like amazing groups and you know even when it comes to like uh because we're, we're filming this at what 22nd yeah june 22nd we're filming this uh i would be in calls with just some of other directors and like for the people like maintaining the booths and Seeing how many groups are submitting and the booths that they're submitting it, it is absolutely an insane thing to go and see when it comes to the talented minds behind each individual group and when it comes to the uh, creativity behind every single booth as well. And so it, it, it's all that thing again where it's just like we we are not in a place where like you have have that comfort of knowing that there's going to be people arriving. You have that comfort of having like a well-established name. We're still in our beginning years. This is just year two of us existing. And despite how much like good we've done, we still don't have the certainty of like saying like, yeah, like we have all, all this stuff going in. But now when it comes to seeing, when it comes to seeing like floods and floods of people coming in saying, yeah, I want to be part of this. And not only that, I have a community that wants to help out with this. Even people saying, I have a friend. Or even like a guy that knows a guy that has this awesome community that would love to be a part of this. They get sent our way. They submit in. They get all the help that they need. And like, it, it is shocking to go and see the numbers of people that are appearing here. And it is shocking 
to see how much talent is behind that. So we don't we don't have like a certain number. We had an idea like okay maybe we would have like X amount of people join in. We did not. We did not see this coming at all. Yeah, I was to say, and honestly, I within the next couple of years, I I personally can see. You know, I could personally see Project Community just constantly growing. Now, granted, you know, with how many booths we have this year, God, there's a good chance we're going to need, you know, a second world for booths alone. That's not including like... Oh, I can tell you, like, 25, we're probably going to need a second world. Because if if this keeps up, like, we're already starting to run into, like, some slight problems about, like, trying to find space to put booths. But if this growth keeps up, we're going to have to have a second world. Which, yeah. that is such a positive thing to say. Saying that, like, we have so many communities that want to be a part of us. We're going to have two separate worlds to showcase them. It's definitely, definitely an amazing thing, to say the least. You know, it just shows growth. Realistically, right? It shows amazing growth when it comes to this platform, when it comes to project community, you know realistically like shoot there's there's so many communities in this in this metaverse like the opportunities are really endless which no i'm I'm not gonna segue no fuck i'll segue anyway speaking of which if you are a community representative ambassador director and if you're interested in partaking in anything project community maybe having a booth a poster or something in the world unfortunately this year it is closed however there are other events coming later down in the year. I'm not allowed to disclose that, but there are other events that you can take part of. So, you know, make sure to go join the discord at discord.gg slash PJKT, you know, and just apply to be a community representative at project community. You know, there, there's many ways to showcase your community, whether it's, you know, events, you know, booth, uh, films, even if you're a filmmakers, uh, community, you know, there's so many cool things. You know, I would say. Can you go to the wide shot real quick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take my I'll take my check in the mail, um, but or on PayPal, <laughs> uh, or Ko-Fi. Ha, Ko-Fi. No, I'm just kidding. Um, ah, Ko-Fi. Ka, yeah. Your your payment is a statuette. Man. Okay. Fair. Um, but <laughs> even though, even though it definitely was not paid by you guys, but it's okay. Um, but no, there's so much amazing stuff to be looked forward to. Um, yeah, no, from what I've gotten to witness, uh, prerequisite to the fest, um, there's a lot of cool different things that are in this world compared to the 2023 one. Um, a lot more representation overall. Uh, between all the community representatives and, you know, all the creators that have, you know, submitted stuff. So it's definitely a cool thing to see. But, however, we are out of time. Unfortunately. Damn it. Yeah. So, Chris, I obviously want to give you a chance to, you know, tell the community where they can find you, where can people look you up at, all that jazz. The floor is yours well first of all let me let me move closer to the camera real quick um if you don't know it's tradition to do one thing and one thing every single time that uh i get filmed so give me a second all right cool so <laughs> discord.gg4 slash pjkt that's where you go check us we're also on twitter Fuck calling it X. Twitter.com forward slash uh, PJKT underscore com. Uh, we also have a Ko-Fi as well. Just drop the link. I'm pretty sure it's also like PJKT as well. Um, yeah, so we also have VR Chat group, which, hold on, let me see. Am I even repping the group right now? Yes, Let me make are. sure I'm repping the group. Yes, you are. Hell yeah, sweet. That's also PJKT dot three, seven, four, one, three, seven, four, one. Hey, guess what? It's a, a 10 plus five. Three plus seven is 10. Four plus one is math fuck you anyways <laughs> with that being said like there's probably some other spaces as well but those are the major ones twitter updates discord.g4 discord if you're a rep 
join that because that's the way you get updates twitter for all our social media posts and then also the VHA group as well call five want to send some money our way because we we really appreciate that and that helps fund some stuff that we're doing as well because despite the fact that we can do this shit for free there's still money that has to be thrown around when it comes to making sure that maintain stuff is happening like our servers and also of course like uh stream keys and you know all that stuff there fun also uh yeah that that should be everything if you want to support me then go also as well code five forward slash uh chris connie i make cards sometimes trading cards they're cool true also twitch <laughs> oh yeah twitch also puzzle <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen everybody inside and outside the ballpark this has been episode 18 Featuring the lovely, amazing otter, Chris Connie, one of my homies. You're good, brother. But I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a comment down below. Please make sure to go check out Fest. Let us know in the comments how you like Fest. There's so many events. Tell us what you did down at Fest down in the comments. Uh, make sure to smack that like button. And if you're coming back watching some of the other episodes or this is your first time watching, please feel free to smack that subscribe button. Because why not? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I do want to thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. And of course, you want, you want to do the thing? Should we do it together? Yeah. Uh, shout out John Ovler. <laughs> I did not say the name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the thing. Last you know, time. Let's go. Three, Anyways, I know the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Three, two. One, welcome, welcome to the crew. To the crew.